Hey physics students, here we have another uh, tutorial video. This time we're going to walk through a problem with um, unbalanced forces and circular motion. So we'll just get get started. Okay, now on the problem it says, a bucket half filled with water is attached to a 0 0.75 meter long string and is spun in a vertical circle with a constant speed of 3.5 meters per second. If the bucket has a mass of 3 kilograms, what is the difference in string tension at the top and bottom of the circle? So, you can see here we have a force diagram. Uh, the center of the circle is right here. The radius is being shown as 0.75 meters because that's how long the string is. And I went ahead and used the dot for the bucket because, as you know, I have terrible handwriting and I definitely can't draw. So the dot represents the bucket. At the top of the circle, we have two forces acting. The force of the string on the bucket, directed radially inwards and down, and the force of the earth on the bucket, also pointing down and towards the center of the circle. And then at the bottom of the circle, we have the force of the earth on the bucket, pointing radially outwards from the circle and down, and the force of the string on the bucket, upwards. So we have uh, the mass listed as 3 kilograms, the force of the earth on the bucket, 24.93 newtons, the radius, 0.75 meters, and the speed is 3.5 meters per second. So we'll skip down here now and take a look at the force analysis. So as you know, objects moving in a circle have a constantly changing direction. So even though the speed is the same, this change in direction uh, means that any object moving in a circle is constantly accelerating. And so for our sum of the forces equation, we can set that equal to the centripetal force, F sub C, and that is equal to the force of the string on the bucket plus the force of the earth on the bucket. So the centripetal force will be the sum of these two forces right here. Subbing in what we know about equations, we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So here we have mass times centripetal acceleration is equal to the force of the string on the bucket plus the force of the earth on the bucket. And then substituting further, since we know that centripetal acceleration can be calculated by the formula v squared over r, we substitute in v squared over r and wind up with the final equation mv squared over r equals the force of the string plus the force of the earth. Solving the equation for the force of the string on the bucket, since we already know the force of the earth, we get mv squared over r minus the force of the earth on the bucket, and then by crunching the numbers, we find that the force of the string on the bucket at the top of the circle is positive 19.75 newtons. Now in this case, we're talking about positive numbers because I've chosen to define any force directed towards the center of the circle as positive, which would mean the force of the earth, the string, and the, at the top, and the force of the string on the bottom are all going to have positive values, not negative. And then anything pointed radially outward from the circle will have a negative value. So that'll be the force of the earth on the bucket at the bottom. So once again, at the top, we have 19.75 newtons for force of the string. Now moving on to the bottom, we have the same equation set up, still it's the same centripetal force equation, same two forces acting. I skipped some steps this time, but we again have mv squared over r equals force of the string on the bucket plus force of the earth on the bucket. Here put in parentheses, like I just said, because we're going to make this negative. And so now when we solve, we wind up with the force of the string is equal to mv squared over r plus the force of the earth on the bucket. And by crunching the numbers, we find the force of the string on the bucket uh, at the bottom of the circle is 78.43 newtons, which leads us to having a difference in force between bottom and top of 58.9 newtons. So notice here, the tension is much higher at the bottom of the circle. And that makes sense. As this bucket is moving around and around in a circle, at the bottom, the force of gravity will be pulling the bucket down, and we're going to have to use all of the force generated by the string to hold the bucket in this constant circular motion. At the top, the force of the earth on the bucket is actually helping to keep the bucket uh, traveling in this uniform circular motion. So hopefully this has been helpful, and um, good luck on future circular motion problems. Alright, peace out.